ahead, put some good day, ECHL fans. This is going to be the series analysis, as I just did one for the Rapid City Rush versus the Allen Americans. That'll be linked at the end of this video if you want to check that one out. This is going to be on the Jacksonville Icemen, as they were able to sweep their first round opponent. As this is going to be the series analysis of them against Pyle's team, who won the coach of the year, but unfortunately, uh, his Atlanta Gladiators were for their fans were not able to step up as Jeff Pyle after winning the coach of the year's team falls in a series sweep in the first round of the postseason but also you still got to give the hats off to the hell of a year for the gladiators it's just they were not able to d up and play good defense in this first round series at all after winning the regular season they were a team one of the teams that kept their goals allowed under <clears throat> 200, which is a really good stat to have. But obviously, stats can sometimes be deceiving. And they scored 220, where this is going to be a perfect example of how stats can sometimes be deceiving. Because then when we go back, that's why I always use surface stats, analytics, and what I see to really be able to rate people and use all three of them and some more than others, because I think that's the most fair way to judge people. Because then certain guys don't look the best analytically but also just are great gamers that are able to still get it done so you have to look at your eyesight more for that and maybe the surface stats as well other guys you have to just look more for eyesight because they don't look the best in in the score sheet but they're able to just get stuff done that are the little things like win battles and etc cetera, etc cetera. but that's kind of just giving a outline to how i look at things and so the gladiators were a good defensive team solid offensive team scoring the 220 goals and limiting their um, opponents uh, overall keeping their goal share under 200 on the season allowed, but then in the postseason, they just started allowing way too many goals. They were not tight enough in front of their goaltender, and that was the big reason why that led to their unsuccess, where when it came to the Jacksonville Icemen, the Icemen were a very good team on the penalty kill, just like the Gladiators, who I believe at an 84%, the Icemen have an 83 and both were not the best in the power play, 15 to the Gladiators percentile to 17 for the Icemen, where the Icemen scored less goals than the Gladiators and also did give up over 200 goals allowed, but really did tighten it up defensively um, in this series. That is for Dawn Shore when it came to the Jacksonville Icemen as they were really able <clears throat> to have a successful uh, playoff series uh, from their guys on defense as well, which is something that wasn't, I, I think, as much said by their fans in terms of not points productions from Fortunato and Brazola and others, but the consistency of being able to tighten it up in the defensive zone in front of your netminder and get it done there. So for the guy like Francois Bassar, who won rightfully so the Nick Fertucci Award, the goaltender of the year, he was able to play like a bat out of hell stellar again. But the big reason why the Icemen were really able to get to the playoffs was of kind of how Bucky an ECHL level season from Broussard being a great carrying rate of their defense, being spotty at times and leaving guys open. And he was the best goalie in the league, obviously getting them that award. And then Charles Williams played very solid in his one game as well, being able to pick up a win in the series sweep. So they have a good backup goaltender and a fantastic the best starter in the league. Fortunato is very dangerous in the offensive zone. Jacob Friend is actually good in the defensive zone. Panetta as well. So I think they're starting to have guys kind of have their coming out parties maybe in the playoffs. And that could be huge for Jacksonville going forward. But we'll have to see what happens with them going forward. Because obviously the regular season spoke to some inconsistencies in front of their netminder. But their netminder is also a freak of nature in all the greatest ways possible. Francois Bessard. So if it keeps going in that direction, they could be set. Brendan Harris, Christopher Brown, Hurachuk, Martin, um, Gerdukas, yeah, Nazarin. They had depth scoring in this series as well. So that was key for the Jacksonville Icemen. Where the falling for the Atlanta Gladiators in this series, what made them fall, the falling reasons, was literally they just <clears throat> weren't able to get any of their depth scoring. And something that was good in the regular season, their defense was just not sharp in this postseason uh, whatsoever. Their penalty kill was still fine in the postseason. Um, you were still able to have guys like Sylvester and Shin show up. Uh, Roy and Nesbitt were solid, but they had some tur moments. McAvoy and Turner didn't provide enough for you. On defense, you weren't able to get any push really from your back end at all defensively or offensively. So that was a huge problem. Uh, Chris Neal also wasn't the sharpest uh, in the series for the Atlanta Gladiators. 
and then Murdaka um, in his game uh, was wasn't that great either to say the least so their goaltending wasn't the sharpest but also you can't really blame the goaltending fully I would have to put it on the defense and the goaltending together as an equal at least or maybe a little bit leaner on the defense because the defense uh, really controls the goaltending the goaltending can really only do as much as what the guys do in front of them but hanging them out the dry you really have to be a freak of nature in there kind of like Bershaw, uh for the their opponent there um, in Jacksonville, but I thought this was a fun, even in a sweep, sometimes sweeps aren't the best series to watch, but because you have Francois Broussard um, in net, and he's one of the most freakishly great, talented ECHL goalies that I'm sure is going to get a chance at the AHL level at some point, still only being, I want to say, 26, 27 years of age, so he still has room to grow as a weight bloomer there as well. Uh, he's a guy that hats off to him, a former Maine Mariner who the uh, Reading Royals are playing right now, my team, but hats off to him. Nick Luco, hats off to him for being a finalist in the coach of the year that obviously went to Jeff Pyle. He then beats Jeff Pyle, so uh, being one of the finalists there, Kirk McDonald was the other. He sweeps Jeff Pyle, and his team's riding high going into the second round. So, so hats off to the Jacksonville Iceman um, for having a fantastic start as they literally wiped the floor with the Gladiators, <clears throat> didn't even let them score one goal. The, the only game really in this one that the Gladiators, they battled in every game minus the first one where they literally w wiped the floor with them in the first one where Herachuk, uh Lynch, Jacob Friend was even able to score from the defense, Christopher Brown, Martin, and others were able to tally it. And the Gladiators <clears throat> um, were able to get the shots on net, but... The reason they were able to wipe the floor with them in this game is none other, again, than their absolute stud goaltender, um, Francois Broussard, who was able to have a fantastic game. In the second game, the Icemen were able to win 2-1 to one and got enough goals from Lynch and Nazarin, uh, where <clears throat> the shots were more even in this game, only a four advantage, where in the first game it was advantage of Gladiators, but still a lot of good chances, and obviously the net mining of the Gladiators left a bit to be desired that that's why they weren't able to win the series as well as the bad defense as a whole so in this game it was a lot more even and the Iceman having the better offense pushing the entire series were able to come out on top and that's what did it <clears throat> in the final or in the second to last game I should say as this was the best game for the Gladiators really pushing showing more of that regular season offense they were able to have from Roy McAvoy Turner and Sylvester to get the four goals, but going into overtime, it doesn't benefit you at all in the postseason like it does in the regular season to get you some points, so they were able to come out on top as Hurachuk was able to win it for the Jacksonville Iceman in this game, and this was a game that Williams was in, but I didn't think he played poorly. I thought the uh, Gladiators just took advantage of his weaknesses because Williams is still a developing goaltender to Bressois, who's to Broussard, excuse me, who's already amazing at the ECHL level. Well, that's why Williams is a backup right now, still developing, and Broussard is one of the best starters in the league, and by voting, the best in the league this year, obviously winning the Goalie of the Year award, which is well-deserved. And then the final game, they won 3-2. to two. The shot total actually favored Jacksonville in that one. I think the Gladiators kind of used all their steam kind of in the game prior. They did battle. Shin and Nesbitt were able to score. So it's not like they didn't show any battle. Great battle by the Gladiators in this series. It's just the team that had more oomph kind of ended up winning this. And I went over the players for each team that were sharp. And it was just the better team, I think, ended up winning this. And in the end, Gladiators had a hell of a season led by Coach of the Year, Jeff Pyle. But Nick Luco's team was just stronger and better when it mattered most in the postseason. And that's what got the Jacksonville Iceman over the top. This has been a series analysis of the Jacksonville Iceman against the Atlanta Gladiators. So obviously now I won't be doing an Iceman, which is nice to see Nick Luco, a former running road, do fantastic. I won't be doing a, um <clears throat> Iceman season recap yet, where the Gladiators, I will be doing that shortly along with the rest of the team that did not make the postseason, their season recap, to be able to talk about the seasons they had and what stuff they could potentially have for moving forward and all that type of yada yada. But peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please continue to subscribe down below. Keep the channel growing to 250 or more for our goal by the beginning of January. Appreciate your love and support this far. This has been the Gladiators and Iceman series analysis. Peace out, everybody, and stay safe.